Welcome back to another edition of Stecker Studios. In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to paint a landscape painting with watercolor using an analogous color scheme. The drawing we're using comes from an earlier session when we were learning about how to draw with two-point perspective. To set up your palette, choose two colors that are primaries, which you can then use to mix up all the other colors that these two colors make. For instance, I'm using yellow and red, which allows me to mix up orange, red orange and yellow orange as well. We're going to paint this painting in a series of light washes, beginning with the lightest color first. In this case, that happens to be yellow. As you can see, I've started off the painting by painting most of the landscape, including the sky, with a light wash of yellow. In the sky, you can also see that I've started to mix in almost in a wet on wet type fashion, a little more color in order to help create a sense of atmosphere. Now I'm beginning to work in my mountains. I'm starting off with a medium tone and making sure that they get lighter in value and grayer in color as the distance increases. As I start to apply my next layer in the foreground and middle ground, I'm trying to start to begin to build layers of value, but also increase the intensity of the colors that I'm applying. So here I'm using a slightly darker orange tone. Again, still kind of a thin wash that I'm fading out as it gets closer to the horizon line. In the foreground, I'm taking it a step further by adding red directly and mixing it directly on the paper to help develop a warmer tone in the foreground, but also again to help increase the level of uh, darkness in my values. This helps to increase the sense of atmospheric perspective by showing that the values get lighter as they get closer to the horizon line or further into the distance. I'm going to begin working on the sky a little bit more, adding more layers of color and value to help create a sense of atmosphere as the foreground dries. Next, I'm going to start filling in my shadows using a bold red to help create contrast. As the shadows get further away, they also begin to fade in contrast. My trees will also get their second layer using a medium tone and the wet on dry technique to cover about 75% of the tree, creating texture for our leaf pattern. I'm also going to begin painting my building showing directional light. The side of the building furthest from the light source is going to receive the darkest colors, whereas the side of the building that hits the light most directly will be the lightest. Again, remember to fade out your colors and values as they get further into the distance in order to show atmospheric perspective. Now I'm going to add my final shadow tone to my tree using a nice dark bold red. I'm going to cover about 25% of the tree, mostly at the bottom and on the side furthest from the light source. Since my rooftops receive the most direct sun, they're going to be painted with a nice bright yellow. And now I can kind of go back and clean up any other areas on my painting, create smooth general transitions, apply a few final shadows, and then paint my windows in also with that yellow, showing that they're reflecting some light. Because the colors we've been using are analogous and mix easily with one another, they help to really tie the painting together and create a sense of general harmony. Lastly, I'm going to use a lifting dry paint technique in order to lighten up my clouds and help to create a stronger sense of atmosphere. Thanks again for watching. See you next time at Stecker Studios.